everyone. Can you hear me? Welcome to Arise Now, uh, sponsored community talk number two. Um, hard to believe last time we were here December and now it's uh, May and we got beautiful weather. Um, my name's Oakley Ryan and um, by popular demand, no one else volunteered. I'm your facilitator again, but I am taking applications for someone new to do it next time. Um, I wanna welcome you to the beautiful James Stoll Performing Arts Center. A couple thanks. Um, and uh, first thanks goes to our human slide switcher, Mike over there. So we appreciate it, Mike. <laughs> uh, so if we can go to the next, first slide, Mike. Um, James Bull Performing Arts Center, thank you so much for hosting it. They set us all up. Uh, Black Hawk Community Credit Union, that's gonna be sponsoring the delicious uh, appetizers and the drinks that you'll be having after. Um, Bodacious will be the uh, caterer. And I also wanna thank the Gazette and Bliss Communication. They're really our partners in getting the word out about these kind of community talks. So many thanks. So with that, we're gonna have our first panelists. And what we're gonna do with the concept of placemaking. How many of you have heard the term placemaking before? Right? I was doing some research on it, and it's, it's being used a lot. It's being thrown out there a lot. And I, I think the placemaking is making something pretty, right? But in my research, and, and I think in my heart, I understand that placemaking has a structural, a building focus to it, but it has an incredibly important emotional. And I read an article, a short two-page article, that said the most important thing about creative placemaking is you're creating a space where people want to come, and feel welcome. I think that's a really cool. And so two of the elements you think about placemaking that can make that happen are public art and activation of spaces. So that's how we chose our two topics. Those are the topics we're gonna dive into. We're gonna do it by starting with a kind of a national or Midwest perspective with our two panelists, and then we're gonna talk with local folks and, and have them share what they're doing on that. So with that, Christine, what's going on in the Midwest with space activation? Thank you, yes. I have the um, wonderful opportunity to sit on the board of directors for the Midwest Association of Convention and Visitor Bureaus. And what that means is I get to travel throughout the Midwest to similar um, size communities to ours and see what they have going on. And I get to go do visits and kind of see what's happening. And I've got some examples of what I saw. Some are things that we already are planning on doing. Some are things that might not be right for us and some are just ideas to look at. So we'll go ahead, the first um, area in the area of product development. Lincoln Park, um, Minnesota is a suburb of Minneapolis and I think they get lost in that way. They're just considered a suburb. They have created what's called a craft district. And when we say craft district, we're not talking about macrame and uh, paper mache. They are talking craft more of a maker's district where they have a pottery shop or uh, a textile place where you go in and watch the crafters work. You watch your product being made. You don't simply buy a piece of pottery, you watch it being made and create that unique craft district experience. They also have um, created events around that. So I love this, they're homegrown winter fiasco. There's nothing going on in the winter, so they created something around that craft district. They also kind of follow through with that with their signage. Um, it's painted right on the side of the building. So we all talk about signage is so complicated and so difficult. It's painted right on the side of the building and kind of welcomes you into that craft district. The next area that um, we took a look at is Wausau. And quite often in downtowns, you have a situation where you want people to live there, but they can't find um, a gallon of milk on a Tuesday because there isn't grocery stores and things to do. Wausau, for product development, a business came in called Downtown Grocery. And they described themselves as an everyday farmer's market, kitchen, and um, bake shop. So you can get a gallon of milk on a Tuesday in a store that lives there in the Downtown Grocery. And they didn't want an identity crisis, they simply called themselves Downtown Grocery. Um, they also, in Wausau, and many of you may have seen this, there's Third Street Umbrellas. And that's a great way of creating a product that's um, almost temporary in nature. It's not bricks and mortar, it isn't taking up space on the sidewalk, it's literally something that pops up in the summer, it stays through the fall, and then comes down again. It's almost a pop-up attraction, similar to a pop-up store great visual um, thing to do and also takes you outside of the space so you're looking up. People might not consider an attraction that forces you to look into the sky. The other area we wanted to talk about is partnerships and Eau Claire is a great example with their Confluence Center. Not right for everybody. This was a huge project that was almost 15 years in the making and what's great here is it's a 15 million dollar project but it spurred over 100 million in construction uh, that launched after this went into place. 
The other interesting thing now that it's up, they surveyed employment in the community. They found that 21% of the people now work in the downtown since the Confluence Project was launched. And again, this was a partnership with UW-Eau Claire, um, the arts community, Visit Eau Claire and their downtown group to really combine arts and community into one large center. Um, great, not right for everybody, but a great idea of a big partnership. Uh, some of the other things Eau Claire does is really lighting as public art. So many of us think it's sculpture or murals or very set things. They do some great things with lighting. There's an example of their lights on the bridge, and I know we're moving towards that. They also have some other lighting as public art. The other neat public art thing they, does, they did is their Baroque wire sculpture. They struggled like we do with what is there to see and do in the winter. And this was a project dedicated solely to those winter months. It's a light up um, wire sculpture that looked beautiful and brought people out and created festivals around that um, sculpture. We also talk about programming public space and Rapid City is a great example. And some of these Midwest communities, when I hear I'm going, I think, gosh, why am I going? What does Rapid City have to offer me? And I, I'm proven wrong every time. They have done an amazing job of programming their space. I was there, I flew in on a Saturday and left on a Tuesday. And um, what I saw every night of the week, Monday and a Tuesday afternoon, looked very similar to this, where people were really out using the community. If we look at the next slide, you'll see there's kids out there and families out there. And I was out there on Monday, we took our walking tour of the downtown. Each conference we do a walking tour. And I saw parents and kids and families, and it was maybe 5.15 and 5.30. I said, why are all these families here? Is there a special event? Uh, there wasn't an event, but they have their daycare right within the downtown. So those parents that are working downtown can pick up their kids and go right in and use the space and be part of the downtown. So they do just an amazing job of programming and using that space. When we were there again at 5.15, you could grab a glass of wine, you could sit down, you could talk, and you would never have guessed that it wasn't a Friday night in the community. And um, the other last thing I'll touch on is personality. Downtowns can be like people and they can have personality. And Tarpon Springs, although it's not in the Midwest, I find myself there because it's a, my sister-in-law lives there, it's a free place to stay in Florida. So I find myself in Tarpon Springs and if you've ever been there, there's no doubt about who and what they are. They are a Greek community and they're about the sponge docks. So you literally have this attraction that floats up to you in the form of a boat full of sponges. And you watch those guys unload those sponges and you can bring them in and you can buy them right there. There's no doubt you're in a Greek community and there's no doubt that you're gonna buy and see some sponges and learn about that part of it. The last slide that I'll show talks about not being afraid to have fun and have personality. Um, if you read this slide, I did not travel with my husband, but if I had, this would be where I would put him. It was literally husband daycare. So. Ladies, you can do your, the mall should have this. Um, you ladies, you leave your husband behind and um, he stays out of trouble there. So don't be afraid to create that personality and that fun sense of spirit in your downtown. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. I have been working with the Arise Now committee now um, since last fall, so I'm really starting to feel like Janesville is a home away from home from me. Um, go ahead and go to the first slide. So um, I am, as Oakley said, I am based out of Madison myself. Um, Coda Works is actually a, it's an online network. We kind of sometimes call ourselves the LinkedIn of the art community. So it is a, a national, international company, but also a, a local company in a way. Go ahead. Um, we are a, a startup company based out of Madison, um, but we are what we call the hub of the commissioned art economy. And it, it really is a national company in the sense that we work mostly with um, United States projects and um, a lot of, I do a lot of commissioned art work with other um, states, California, Florida, Virginia. But um, we also really have an international presence as well because Coda Works hosts um, an annual awards program called the Coda Awards. And we generally have about 39 to 40 countries that submit to the Coda Awards every year. What we do is we bring together um, folks from all over the industry. We also are hosting um, our second annual Coda Summit in Texas this fall. And what that is, is it's um, 
a conference that's focused on the exciting work of innovation in art. And so artists are coming together um, and industry resources from all over the world to talk about how they can collaborate with each other and how innovative art is really changing how we're experiencing art. And um, just to show you a little bit about the community, we're, we're not just for artists. So as I said, industry resources, architects, designers, we work with, with shippers, anyone that would be involved in commissioned art in any capacity from beginning to end. Our community of artists is about 17,000 artists and design professionals, and I also mentioned architects, interior designers, landscape architects, and then industry resources, everything from engineers to shippers to fabricators. We even have an insurance program because we have found that it's vital to have liability insurance when you're installing new artwork. And um, CodaWorks's goal, ultimately our mission, is to make more great art happen. Our founder um, has been in the art business since the 80s, and she had the source books back in the 80s that helped lots of interior designers get great work. And then we've moved into the public art realm because that is really the, the wave of the future. And we believe that public art really contributes to the intellectual, emotional, and creative life of a community. And our, our expertise in commissioning art from, from the concept to the design proposal phase to the installation and even in project management from beginning to end really has allowed us to witness firsthand how art can revitalize a community and, and just the expanse of the trend of what I like to call the creative economy. And obviously, um, a couple things to note. Major trends are there's a lot of percent for art programs in cities. Lots of big cities are doing this. If a developer is going to build a new building, they have a percentage of their total budget that has to go to artwork. And um, lots of cities do this for, for if they're doing a new park. Um, part of the park budget has to go to artwork as well. But um, savvy small towns that maybe don't have that, but do have forward thinkers and business people who understand um, community members like Janesville, they're realizing that art can help drive the economy and the creation of it um, not only helps with um, bringing in people to help create the art, not just the artists and their fabricators, but construction companies that are local or suppliers that are local or a shipping company that makes sense to use a shipper close to the site of the artwork instead of where it's coming from. Lots of ways to generate um, money and boost the economy in the city where the artwork is being generated. Obviously, not every city is a Chicago, not every city has the bean, but a lot of what we are hearing is people want Instagrammable art. I hear that a lot. I want that, that's a keyword in my call, Instagrammable art. I want people to stand in front of it and take a picture because as soon as they do, you're world famous now. Your artwork is out there. And um, there's also lots of other ways. Um, another trend, this top right photo, lots of trends in public art are way, creating wayfinding systems. So this particular project, you'll see it's, it's some light fixtures on a road. It's just one part of an entire city where they've gone from street to street, and it, it's really a wayfinding system. I've, I've had a lot of um, folks say, okay, I've got this sculpture, and I want people to say, meet me by the lion. Um, and, it, and it's a way for the art to really become a part of your community. Um, that's what placemaking art is. And I love this one on the bottom left, and I think that this really applies to a lot of what you're doing in Janesville. Bringing life to historic buildings. Um, obviously, you've done it here. And, and so oh, this, I didn't show you the before photo, but it was just this rundown old brick building and they painted over what used to be those barred up windows and now there's a beautiful piece of artwork on the side of the road. And then the final one is, is interactive art. Um, it it's kind of goes along with that Instagrammable notion that there is a lot of art out there that you can sync up with your phones, with your devices. It brings people to the place because everyone wants to experience it. They've seen it, they want to see it for themselves. It's not the same to see it in a picture. You need to be there yourself. 
Another thing that we really talk about is collaboration. So there's a complexity to these projects. It doesn't take one person. Art is not done in a bubble. One of the conversations that I loved having with some of the artists we've been talking about for the um, Heritage Bridge Project is that you ask any artist now, um, are you okay with collaborating with an architect but also a handful of artists? What if there's five artists on this project? Are you okay with that? Yes. It, it, art is one of those things that everyone believes the more people at the table is actually a better thing. Um, community involvement. I rarely hear a public artist anymore who doesn't want to delve into the community and talk to the people and get to know who it's for. It's not just about creating something in a studio and slapping it up on a wall. This is really uh, something that is generated for a community. And artists working with each other and, and learning from each other. That's one of the reasons that we created the Coda Summit that I mentioned. And um, everything from fabrication to installation to lighting and electrical, those are all things that artists may not bring that expertise to the table and they have to reach out and collaborate with someone. It's a lot of how we can bring local businesses into the mix as well when those elements are wanted in a piece of public art. And then um, I've also heard of some great um, cities that are doing uh, apprenticeship programs too, so that if a um, large name public artist from across the world, across the country is coming in to do a piece, but they want to involve local artists as well, it's a way to say, all right, come on board and let's work together and I want you to work with me here, I want you to shadow me here, let's learn this process so that if you haven't done a public art piece of this um, budget before, now you've got the experience and you're, you're that much elevated. So it's really exciting what the potential is. So for um, public art, uh, you know, I, I love, I love where you're at right now in Janesville. There's a really exciting juncture because you already have incredible existing art in this community. You've got the, the world famous Nivola masterpiece on Bliss Communications, the Ovi Schaefer famous artist, Core 10 Steel Culture at the library. And so there's already a jumping off point that's really exciting to incorporate what already exists into what is coming. And um, current artwork can really kickstart um, a creative economy. And I wanted to mention, you know, I showed you the bean in Chicago. You think of public art, you think of LA, you think of New York, you think of Washington or Portland. But there are other communities out there. Charlotte, um, you don't necessarily think of, but Charlotte is very, very known for their public art and placemaking because it's something that the city has really um, made a top priority. And if you go to their website, it, it's just incredible what you see there. And on an even smaller scale, um, there is a town in Minnesota called Lanesboro, and it is a town of 750 people. Yes, you heard me right. 750 people, and they have what they call an arts campus. And um, they, they are incredible. Um, Lanesboro has a lot of local artists. They also have art from famous artists. Some of their local artists have become famous, and it's pretty incredible. Um, and between the, the way that they think of this arts campus is that they bring the arts center in with a theater company that's in town, in with the Chamber of Commerce. They always make art a priority in this community. And in tandem with um, a gorgeous bike trail and the fact that there are no chain restaurants, no hotels, there's like 25 bed and breakfasts. This town of 750 people in the summertime, their population's 5,000. People come from all over because of what they have done with the arts in this community. And I wanted to wrap up this part with Fountain Hills, Arizona. I love this image. This is their art walk. This is a map. If you look at this map, every single dot you see is a piece of artwork. And it is incredible. And this is where you are headed. And I really, really hope that there are plans to make a map of Janesville because people are going to come to tour the art. And they want to know where it is, and they want to know where to go. And they're going to want to hop on their bikes and go from piece to piece. Fountain Hills is a population of less than 25,000. And I guarantee you that it draws audience from Phoenix and Scottsdale regularly. So this is just a great visual to show you what the potential really is. Go ahead. So um, 
It's just thrilling. I mean, you've already started. This is, I mean, it, it's, it's incredible where this is going. I've been thrilled to work with the Arise Now Committee. I just want to end with some projects that we have done. My job with CodaWorks is um, I'm an RFP specialist. So I help the, the city, the um, committee, like you folks have, sometimes developers, sometimes um, just a couple community members that have gotten together to fundraise some things because they really think it's important to bring art. Um, and I help them to find the right artist for their job. So um, this piece is actually in Madison. This was um, a really hideous old building that um, a developer revitalized, and it was pivotal for him to include public art. And it is a um, light show waterfall that is programmable, and it's just stunning. Um, if you ever get up, it's just off the Capitol. Please check it out. This is another piece that was in a plaza, and it was trying to encourage people to come and sit and be. So inside the artwork, there's also benches, places to hang out. It's a beautiful site along where there are a bunch of restaurants as well, really um, scaling up that, that part of downtown. This is really close to my heart. We actually just unveiled this project um, a week ago, and I um, was thrilled to work on it. it. It came across our desk completely randomly, and it actually is from my high school, my alma mater. They brought in this professional artist. He's a world-famous artist from LA um, named Michael Kalish, and he spoke recently about how this was, believe it or not, it's a very small town, um, a village just outside of Madison, and they, um, they wanted to celebrate excellence in education. And they brought Michael in, and he said this was the best project he had ever worked on. And it was because he got to work with kids. He, he met with the students multiple times. He worked with their innovation lab. They helped him to create the artwork. And he also involved the community. He involved construction companies. He involved a local fence company as much as he could do to involve the community in the process of building the sculpture. It's really incredible. This is just a way to um, do inf infrastructure. This is a, an artist named Vicki Scurry that we have worked with who a lot of the work she does is to revitalize bridges and underpasses to make them art and make them beautiful as you're driving by. And that is it. Um, my contact info is on there. My name is Stephanie, I spell it with an F. Please feel free to email me, stephanie at codaworks.com. If you know of any Rock County artists, or if there's any in the audience tonight who are not members of CodaWorks yet, um, any professional artist can register. Any architect in the audience can register. Um, interior designers, please get on. It's, it's free to register. We wanna make sure that people are on the list because we also love to encourage um, local artists. Projects come up all the time and we want as much involvement as possible. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks so much, Stephanie. Um, we had a great, what a feast, a visual feast, right? It's kind of fun. Um, I think the cities that thrive are the ones that uh, create their own ideas, but learn about best practices and, um, and steal from others, right? And um, so thank you for sharing that. We're going we're gonna to go local now. And um, we're going to start it off, uh, Julie, um, who, how long have you been president of? Uh, only a couple of years. So uh, Janesville Art League was the first, probably one of the first community membership organizations I joined. My mother-in-law, Betty, said, there's this great group, you gotta join them. And I have to say, because of um, Janesville Art League, uh, Toby and I, uh, I just counted yesterday, we now have 15 pieces of artwork in our home that are done by local artists. And um, it was pretty great starting out. Um, it was affordable, it's beautiful, and they're still my favorite pieces. So Janesville Art League is an amazing asset and we're thrilled to have them here to just kind of give us a general lay of the art scene in Janesville. Great, thanks. Um, I'm glad to hear you bought some art. <laughs> <laughs> Token um, wasn't. <laughs> obviously, obviously I've been called here to toot our horn because I think that we are a treasure here in the city. I'm also delighted to share in the caring and the pride that I feel Arise has now developed in Janesville. Um, I was up in my office, which is on the top floor of the Old Town Mall building right across from Festival Street, and it was so gorgeous to look out and see all the lights and the beginning of the footbridge that's going to connect the two sides of the river, and I just, it, it was wonderful to see. Um, again, I feel that there are many treasures that the city and county should be aware of, and I think Janesville Art League is one of them. 
Our mission statement to preserve and share its gallery and permanent collection, which is at the Women's Club at 108 South Jackson Street and to support and encourage the creation and appreciation of all forms of visual art by involving its members and the community through educational programs, trips, scholarships, art shows, exhibits, and fellowship. We're currently a group of about 140 members. In 2016, about a third of our members were artists, and this year we had nearly twice as many artists as those who put on their membership form were just appreciators of art. The Art League is an important resource source for the community and the county because it owns and curates a documented and significant art collection. The collection is comprised of purchased art, donations, and gifts. We've already heard a little bit about the O.V. Schaefer sculpture in the grounds, and there are several pieces in our gallery upstairs as well. We have an Eleanor Mills gallery also upstairs, which features local artists' work, most of which are for sale. We started collecting art in the 1890s. The Art League started as a sketching club and has obviously grown into a great organization. The Art League invites local community to participate in free lectures and demonstrations and are welcome to participate in field trips we have. We'll be going to Chicago on the 13th of June this year, and we'll do another trip in the fall. We have been excited to have JATV film several of our events because I really wanted this to be open to even more of the community. And our new season will start in September. Also, look for Art League members' work all over Janesville. We have hangings at St. Mary's Hospital, the Janesville Country Club, Marling Homeworks, and the beautiful gallery here at JPAC. We have a long-standing commitment and partnership with JPAC. Over the past few years, the Janesville Art League has had a presence in downtown, and we're participating in the Jolly Jingle and the Wine Walk and the Talman House Festival. The foundation at 108 South Jackson Street re recently uh, renovated our building, the main floor in 2016, and upstairs has also been uh, updated and the art restored. As you can imagine, our 100-year-old building rather needs rather constant work, and the foundation is in the process of raising money for repairing the building's exterior. And if you drive by, you'll notice the landscaping project, and I believe there's a picture of that up on the screen, that was begun through generous support and help from the Community Foundation of Southern Wisconsin, LP Tree Service, Mike Jacobins Concrete, Devorp Landscaping, Sue Cullen, and Recap Workers, just to name a few. And thanks to the Gazette, there was a wonderful front page story that I'm sure many of you saw. It was wonderful. The Janesville Art League also awards $2,000 scholarships each year for local high school students and has done so throughout most of our history. One scholarship is provided through fundraising primarily from participation in the Wisconsin Regional Art Program, RAP as we call it, and that event will come up again in August. And the other scholarship is an ongoing gift scholarship, the Gredler Keating Memorial Scholarship. Over 90 years ago, the Art League was the initial driving force to actually build the building, the Women's Club building. We, uh, the Janesville Art League is one of five clubs that call the historic Women's Club building home along with the University Women, the Daughters of the American Revolution, the Women's Club Association, and the McDowell Music Club. Janesville Art League is a member of the foundation, which was developed in around 19, um, uh, 1990, when we decided we really needed a lot of help to just look at the maintenance and preservation of the building. They have a modest annual budget of $40,000, a percentage of which comes from each of the club members' 
fees. The foundation welcomes nearly 400 members, thousands of visitors, and serves as a base for important community service, scholarships, and public program. And together, over $50,000 has been given back to the city in the last five years. The annual Art League holiday show and sale, which is held right here at JPAC, continued over the last 65 years. The show was originally at Jackson Street, but as it grew, we needed more space, and the League invested in this building of the existing gallery here and have continued here since that time. This is our major fundraising for the League and features the artwork of dozens of local artists. Maybe mostly important, the JAL, JAL cultivates, nurtures, and welcomes a wide range of talented artists whose media range from paint, sculpture, photography, from miniatures to wall murals. Many are award-winning professional artists whose work is recognized nationally and internationally. I'm proud to speak on behalf of the artists and the members, and once again, thanks for acknowledging the, acknowledging the Janesville Art League. Come and visit our gallery. Call upon our artisan members for insight and expertise. We, the League and Clubs and Foundation, as a group, strive to make Janesville a destination, not only for art, but other vital community features as well. This conversation is bigger than me and you. It is really us. And together, we can make anything better. Thanks for inviting us to the discussion today. Thanks for coming, Julia. Um, to, before we get to our next project, Julie, um, I, you hear often um, Janesville is rich with clubs, um, but you do hear about people suffering um, with declining membership. That's not my sense with the Art League. Um, I, my sense is your membership is stable and strong, and I see new members coming in. What, what have you witnessed? Right, I would agree with that. The Women's Club is mm -hmm. another part of that, and they're also right. growing and wanting to be part of the conversation. That's so, great. It's good yeah, to see. obviously the Daughters of the American Revolution <laughs> is not growing. <laughs> okay. We'll work on but, that. We'll find our patriots. The music and the art. Rock County Historical Society will help <laughs> us on that. <laughs> That's great. That's her. Um, I remember one of the um, uh, lecture or one of the artists you had at one of your information was James Richter, yeah. I think, recently. And you can find that on, on JATV, which is super. And that's a great lead in to Colleen and Jason, who's going to talk about, uh, or Val. No, I guess Val. Sorry. I had you wrong. Colleen and Jason. It's Val. Val's up. <laughs> this is a conversation, it's not reversed. <laughs> Sorry, Val. And Val, for the record, are you an artist? Pardon? Are you an artist? Am I an artist? No. <laughs> I do play piano, though, so I guess I am kind of an artist. So, um, so I'm here tonight to update you on a few projects that we have going on in Janesville uh, on behalf of Arise. Um, up on that screen there, I'm sure you, some of you have seen that bright blue wall downtown on the 29th South Cafe. Uh, some of you know that there's eventually going to be a mural there. Some of you probably think, what are the colleges doing? But um, no, yeah, starting on uh, June 12th, um, we're bringing an artist in from Br Brooklyn, New York. His name is Jeff Enriquez. He will be painting a mural on that wall. Um, how Jeff came to Janesville, um, local resident Nigel Orion was visiting her sister in, uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, and I guess they went on a mural tour in Salem. And she saw Jeff's artwork, um, which is on the next slide, which is this uh, faces here of these uh, Native American man here. And she thought, you know what, I want to bring that to Janesville. So she she came back and contacted us, and in the discussion, she is sponsoring Jeff's work here in Janesville. So that is going to be starting uh, June 12th. It's gonna take him one week to do this mural, weather permitting, um, and we are going to have some activities on that day. Um, I would invite you all to come down um, 
and watch what he's doing. We're gonna have some picnic tables down there. Part of the parking lot will be closed off down there. But he spray paints. That's how he does these murals, which is really very interesting to me. Like, I can't even keep spray paint on a pole. I don't know how he's going to do that. But um, just a little background about Jeff. I was reading about him because I was kind of intrigued by him. Um, I did read that his, his father was a billboard painter in the Dominican Republic back in the 40s. Anybody younger than me here probably doesn't know, but billboards used to be hand-painted. They weren't a big piece of vinyl that they slap up there now. So I thought, well, maybe that's how he got some of his uh, interest in art, but um, I thought that was really neat. Um, he has murals from Miami to New York City. He has one at Yankee Stadium of Derek, Derek Jeter. So if you're ever at Yankee Stadium, you can see some of his work there too. Um, so back to, back to Janesville. The mural that he's going to be painting here in Janesville will be Native American themed. It's going to be a mural of Chief Black Hawk. It's going to have Miracle, our white buffalo, our loved white buffalo, and some other Native American symbols. Um, so to build off this excitement of this mural, we're planning a week of activities. There might not be a scheduled activity every day, probably more on the weekend, but we'll have, uh, we've got a, a book author that's going to be coming. We're going to do, hopefully do some face painting. Uh, 29 South is going to be running some specials that day. So we're gonna have some neat things, but we'll have a Facebook event uh, that'll be coming out next week, so you'll be able to see what we have going on for the, uh, for the mural. Uh, the other thing we've done is we've hired Stephen Pickering of Dry Water Productions, and I don't know if any of you have seen Stephen Pickering's work. He's going to do a time-lapsed photography. So he's gonna have a camera over on the Johnson Bank building somewhere, and he's gonna be videoing this for the whole entire week. At the end of his project, he's going to put this together, and we're going to see a time lapse. It's going to be one of those really fun videos. It's going to be great. So uh, watch for that later. We'll publish that as that gets ready, too. Um, outside of the mural, like I said, watch on Facebook. Uh, hopefully in the Gazette, we'll have some schedules of stuff that's going to be coming up. Um, also, another privately funded art project that's going to be coming up will be an anilomatic sundial. That's pretty hard to say, let me tell you. Uh, that is a human sundial. The idea for the sundial came to us from Janet Evans and her father, John Evans, to celebrate his 90th birthday. John's background in mathematics and love for astronomy and physics has led to this venture. He will use his knowledge as a retired astrophysicist to come up with the calculations for the layout. So when I met John, I thought, this, guy's, this guy has to be full of stories. He, uh, he worked as a civilian at Edwards Air Force Base, and he was, he, what he did is he tested and perfected the stability of fighter jets. I mean, wow, that's gotta be pretty, pretty amazing. I said, did you know Chuck Yeager? And he said, yeah. He was a hot shot, <laughs> pretty arrogant. So um, after, after the Air Force, or after he left Andrews, he and his wife and new baby went on to UCLA where he got his master's in science. He returned to the Midwest in the early 60s and after more school and more children, he ended his career at UW Oshkosh as a professor of astronomy and physics. He's been in Janesville since 2010, and Janet joined him in 2018. So the sundial will be, uh, the space that we're looking at right now is the big flat space between uh, Rotary Gardens on Lions Beach there, um, just before the uh, National Guard Armory. So we're hoping this, you know, again, this is a privately funded thing by this family, hoping that this will be installed and ready to go before the snow flies, so. Um, but it will be a very unique civic attraction and, and it will attract everyone. One more project that we're working on is lighting up the courthouse. 
We'll be uh, working with the city of Janesville and Rock County to bring a special project for families to adopt trees that will be lit up in the courthouse park area. Uh, Chantel Street and Jana Ryan as part of the Public Arts Committee are helping me get this off the ground and we're currently working on the planning for that. So once we get something to roll out, you'll hear more about that later. So I just want to close by saying that public art is a very valuable asset to our community and in our personal lives. It encourages us to engage, to appreciate, and to communicate with each other. We will have countless opportunities for public art activities down the road. It could be something for you, something for your club, something for your family, and especially for our local artists to participate in. Janesville will grow to be known for their art. You just wait. Lastly, I ask you to take a couple minutes to appreciate your surroundings and to be thankful for what you have and what we have. And thank you for coming tonight and for being engaged. Colleen and Jason, now is a fun time we actually get to talk about a project that has happened. Um, so, love to hear from that. Well, thanks everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, Jason and I were part of Leadership Development Academy of Rock County. And as part of the academy, we have projects that we are to do in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the community. And we happen to choose um, the uh, revitalization of the Doty Mill Alley. And as you can see up there too, our other team members. So why activate the alley? There was a lot of excitement around Janesville and what's happening in Janesville, and we wanted to be part of that downtown re revitalization. And as you can see, exposure to the town square and Festival Street, you know, two-way traffic was gonna be on Court Street, Milwaukee Street Bridge replacement, pedestrian bridge was going in, and the alley was going to be repaved anyway, so it seemed to be a good segue into making sure that we then move that alley into a, a better spot. Next slide, please. Um, the alley that was chosen um, to go along with the Festival Street, the Town Square, um, is between the IBEW building and the Rock County Charter School, um, Riverfront Center, um, and it kind of connects the, all of them together. Um, the festival, Town Square, Festival Street, all leads into each other. Um, next one. Uh, and the biggest uh, one part of our goals was to stick with the um, Arise vision. Uh, a lot of the progress going downtown, the momentum and partnerships that we had. Uh, we also, uh, yes, as she's going with, uh, that's actually the mural in our alley. Uh, and the next slide, please. One of the partnerships that we had was with the late Ken Corey, the owner of Dube's Jewelry. Uh, probably the nicest man I've ever met and a smile every day that we were there working in the alley. Uh, he suggested the name of Doty's Mill, uh, Doty Mill Alley from Doty's Mill and Doty Manufacturing that were down, uh, located on Dodge Street, uh, about a block from our current alley location. So who benefits from the alley? Certainly the businesses in the alley, um, all, all the people that are going through the, the festival street. Um, you know, we, we realized that we really wanted this to be part of everything else, else that was happening. And so really wanted to, as you can see, bring in all of the, the partners at the table and get their feedback on what they were looking for as far as wanting the ben or what, what that alley looked like. So certainly it was our group, but all the partnerships and all the partners coming to the table to make sure that that was going to be um, what, what was in line with what their vision was as well. So progress to date, and I'm uh, very excited for where Janesville had created a mural um, a, a rep, 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 replicate, <laughs> replicate of the, the mural, but we, 
this is really, um, when we talk about art and we talk about the, the um, alley, this is what it all comes down to is it's, it's a focal point, somewhere that a destination in downtown Janesville that you're wanting to go. You know, it's just so cool to walk down there and see everyone getting their pictures taken. James Richter was the one that created our mural and did a fantastic job and he's actually touching up um, yet this summer with um, finishing up the mural. Um, we had the, all the buildings painted. We also had overhead lighting that um, was put up. And again, when you talk about partnerships, that was the IBEW that they put up the lighting, the, the electrical apprenticeship um, program. They devoted their time and also gave a great deal on the lighting and, and took over on that project on that side. Um, and then there's a picture of the um, state a little bit after James was into the painting process, the IBEW building, uh, the uh, workers and students there, they did all the uh, lighting for us. Uh, some of the future stuff, if you go on to the next one. Um, oh yeah, we also action, had all of the- Action shot. Yes. <laughs> all of the uh, volunteers that were painting, uh, cleaning the alley, uh, numerous departments of the city of Janesville that I got to bug on a daily basis. Um, next one. Um, the project started out as an LDA group. Um, our employers chose us, sent us to it. Um, we all got to be a part of it. Uh, we've gotten to the point now where uh, it's been kind of decided that we're going to dissipate the obligated group and uh, coming after Memorial Day weekend, a new public group will be created uh, and opened up that people can join to further the projects in the alley, as well as other unseen places throughout the city of Janesville to make those destinations, uh, clean up the downtown uh, while also utilizing the businesses downtown. Uh, so that'll be coming probably next week or the week after that I'll be creating that. Uh, so check out the Doty Mill Facebook page. Uh, it will have information about uh, joining up for that. So the exact page on the Facebook page is it's Doty Mill Beautification Project. So if you look that up and like that, that page, we will be posting updates um, on that page. And also we have on the page, you can, you can donate to this project as well. Um, what we want to end on to is just again, we've been overcome with all of the, the wonderful support. You know, it's a grassroots project as a LDA group that we, we put together and, and everybody really came to the table as far as where they could help. Everything from the lift to again, we talked about the lighting and everyone's time and commitment that they've given to this project. We were really, really overcome with um, appreciation. So, and thank you for all your support being here today. Thank you. All right, well, we've um, had a fun deep dive into public art, and remember the two things were space activation, right? So uh, not only can you look at the Janesville mural, but you can dance to it uh, with some of the stuff coming up. So Emily, you're gonna take us to space activation. Yeah, uh -huh. and I could probably talk a whole entire hour on all of the events happening just in our downtown, not only this summer, but the entire year long now um, through the winter. But some of the bigger events that are going on this summer, I'll touch space base on and then, you know, really just looking at the Convention and Visitors Bureau website, our Facebook page, the downtown website, um, there's events happening every single day in downtown. Um, so anyone that says there's nothing happening in Janesville, just look at just in our downtown what's happening. And this is not including all over Janesville. Um, so one of the bigger events that is happening this year that's hosted by Downtown Janes Lake is our Music at the Marv series, and that's presented by Mercy Health this year. This is a 13-week concert series running every single Tuesday night um, at the Marv Broth Pavilion uh, just down the street. And it's um, every single Tuesday, June through August um, from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Um, featuring local um, food trucks, food vendors like The Lark pulling out and setting up and grilling during these events. Um, so come down for some family fun every single Tuesday night this summer. A couple other events that we're hosting downtown this year. We are having our second year of 608 Day, so celebrating living in the 608. 
Um, and this event will continue every single June 8th. Um, hopefully you guys understand that, 608 day, June 8th. Um, took a little bit to catch on, but I think it's, it's working. Um, so this year it is falling on a Saturday. So we are using this to launch a new event, um, a huge family friendly event happening throughout the entire day. Um, and that is going to be called Play Palooza. So uh, during the afternoon, you can come down and we'll have life-size games throughout downtown hosted by some of our local businesses um, and local community groups. Um, and then stick around, eat some dinner, hang out, ride the trolley, kind of cruise around downtown, um, catch a concert in town square that night, and then stay even later and catch a movie. Um, we're screening a movie that night in the park. Um, so that's kind of a wrap up of 608 day. We'll also have a uh, scavenger hunt happening throughout the day as well. Um, and of course, specials throughout all of the businesses. A lot of businesses are kind of doing uh, catchy themes with the 608, 608 day theme. So it'll be a really fun day. Um, and then in August, we are launching a new event, our street fair. So this is kind of a night market on Festival Street in downtown, taking advantage of the gorgeous new street. Um, and this will be a Thursday night in August. This will be our first one. We're hoping this will be you know, a huge event that kicks off and we're able to do it a couple times throughout the summer next year, maybe even eventually morphing into once a week. Um, so this will be a great event. Uh, this one, it'll be a different theme each time, uh, but we have a DJ that we're hiring, uh, that Whiskey Ranch is sponsoring us to hire, um, and he will be doing dueling DJs, 90s versus 2000s. Um, at the pavilion, so that'll be really fun. And of course, you can't miss, the bikes are coming back to downtown. Uh, we're really happy. Yep, um, so the Janesville Town Square Grand Prix is coming back. Thank you to uh, Blaine's Farm Fleet for presenting this. And of course, um, John Westfall and Paul Murphy for really activating this event, pushing for it to come to downtown. Um, we are thrilled. Um, they have a great team working behind them, um, but these are the two main guys that are really pushing for this to happen, and they really have a vision, and this is a huge signature event for downtown, and each year it's just going to continue growing, um, so we're really excited about that. And I'll quick touch on a few other events um, throughout the summer. So the Janesville Farmer's Market is kicked off. That's every single Saturday now, May through October. Um, from 8 to 1, stick around downtown, kind of walk around to the different boutiques. Uh, the Tallman Arts Festival, Art and Fusion, hosted by the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, Rock Aqua Jays, you know, twice a week they have some things and they have some fun jumps competitions and everything that they're doing this year. Of course, the Hedberg Public Library hosts many events for um, both children's and adults. Um, and of course, happening here at the Janesville Performing Arts Center. Huge list of events throughout the summer. Um, and something new this year, we have a vintage market coming to Festival Street. Um, so they are taking advantage of hosting an event during the farmer's market. Um, they'll be doing it four Saturdays this summer to kind of do a test run. So you can walk between the two events. It'll be hosted from eight to one, same as the farmer's market. And then you can kind of walk between, go to the different boutiques, um, and stay downtown and make a day of it. So we're really excited. Um, this is a very small portion of events happening downtown, and this is only, you know, a small portion of the summer. Um, and really, we're really excited. A lot of people are seeing the vision in downtown, especially on Festival Street, and moving, choosing to move their events downtown. Um, a few, for example, the Aruna Run is moving downtown, um, and they're joining in with us for 608 Day. And then the Burt Blaine's Memorial Heart Walk is actually moving downtown as well. Um, so we're really excited to see different events moving downtown and activating the spaces. And of course, you know, all the bars and restaurants are hosting their own events. Lark is always hosting a ton of events, cooking classes and theme nights and those kind of things. Um, and of course, just down the street at Bodacious as well, they host, uh, take advantage of our gorgeous river and host music nights throughout the whole summer. Um, on their back patio. So we're really excited about everything happening downtown. Check out our Downtown Janesville Facebook page. We always you know, link everybody's, um, everybody's downtown events to ours, and then also the Convention and Visitors Bureau as well. Okay. So thank you all. Hope to see you downtown this summer.
So Tobin, my husband, travels a lot. When he gets home and the house is empty, he's like, where is everyone? And I text him. I'm like, I'm downtown. <laughs> All right, that was um, great just content for local. And what I was excited to see was we saw some pictures of places far away. Well, we saw some pictures of things happening here that look kind of similar, right? And that just makes me excited. Um, the other interesting point was each of those projects or things we were talking about was not necessarily, none of them were in a rise now meaning funded project. It was citizens, it was people who cared, it was organizations helping. Uh, Val may be on the Arise Now steering, but she's just a, I call her a connector. She's a helping people connect. And that's what's so exciting. Um, ideas are flourishing. So the last thing to wrap it up is kind of the official Arise Now update. And of course, we're gonna hear from Joe Lynn on that. So I thought since we're kind of getting close on our time, maybe we'd hold off announcing the name of the interactive Til water feature session? until next session. I think that's a great okay. idea. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you all here to hear the name? <laughs> so we'll go to the next slide, and we'll start off with um, Arise Now. Uh, you know, I want to bring this back to the art with Arise Now. And if you remember last year, we launched our first, what we called our public art piece, and it was the kaleidoscope, as you can see there in the photo. It was you know, funded by Arise Now, um, picked and selected by our art committee, which was led by Val, as uh, Oakley had mentioned, and then also by Lori Sperry, um, who was the lead of the team, as well as the other members up there. So this was a committee, um, a group brought together that represented our community that was from the art um, league, the, the downtown um, organizations, those that uh, you know really wanted to see you know that first step in the process. So we were excited. This was really small scale when you think of public art, but we were excited. We can go to the next slide. We picked uh, the, the location, the town square. Um, obviously, lots was happening in the last summer in the development of town square. It's where gatherings are taking place. It's, it's a central location for events. So now we have the Ice Age Trail going right through there. You know, this piece, although we call it a simple little piece, is really an interactive piece. It's engaging. It's family friendly. You put plants in it. It's colorful. You use the kaleidoscope. You have fun with it. Fun for all ages, from the small to the to the older. That's handicapped accessible. So we really felt it was a good first piece to come out with our, our public art piece. We do have plans for a second kaleidoscope to uh, potentially be added on the east side um, when that uh, gets in construction in 2020 and it has been funded by a grant already. Um, next slide. And maybe even you know down the road we might put some other connecting pieces in some other locations. Um, I wanted to touch on real quickly, um, with Festival Street getting completed um, last fall, this is really our first year of activation. We've seen some events down there. We've seen some you know, food trucks, get-togethers, um, music, but this is that first summer. Emily's touched on a few of the events. We can go ahead to the next slide. Um, but I wanted to make sure everybody was aware that you have the opportunity to rent out that space, that you can actually rent out Festival Street. It becomes a pedestrian street. Bollards go up at the end, so cars can't go down. Um, you can rent out the J.P. Collin Memorial Pavilion. So if you have a work picnic or a community get-together, maybe it's a high school, uh, I don't know, graduation party. I mean, maybe you're inviting hundreds of people and you can't do it in your backyard. I don't know. But um, what I'm going to tell you is you're going to contact the city of Janesville, the recreation division, the phone number's there, the website's there. You can look it up on their website as well. But this is activation. So this isn't just the organizations that maybe we represent. This is just isn't DJI or Forward Janesville or Rise Now or whatever your group is. You as a business or an individual can look into these type of rentals as well, just like you'd rent out the Palmer Park Pavilion. Go ahead. Um, at this time, I'd like Paul Woodard to come up. Um, as noted up there, um, the city of Janesville received the 2019 American Public Works Association Wisconsin Chapter Project of the Year Award for their Catalyst Site 1, which is Town Square. And I'm going to let Paul talk a little bit about our now award-winning Town Square. So real briefly, I'm, I'm wearing two hats here tonight. Uh, first one is the, uh, I'm a, I serve on the executive committee for the Wisconsin Chapter of American Public Works Association. So on behalf of the chapter, uh, please present this to the Rise Now. Uh, this award rep recognizes the strong alliance between the managing agency, the consultant, architect, engineer, and the contractor effectively complete the project. Um, 
This award was, winted, was presented uh, to the Department of Public Works and uh, Tim Weber from Rise Now is there at the Oshkosh in our spring conference on May 9th. And secondly, wearing my other hat as Director of Public Works, I will say that this project wouldn't have been as successful if it were not for the public-private partnership with the Rise Now Group. The private funds raised by the private sector greatly enhance this project, and that's, that's what contributed to the, this, us getting this award. And also this, the partnership with the state and federal agencies as well for the grant funding was a great benefit. So, so the city of Janesville, as you mentioned, is now proud to call this down, or downtown award winning. Yeah. Woo It's pretty exciting news. I mean, uh, you know, everything that's been happening downtown and to look at where we're at with Town Square and, you know, where we're going. This is, this is an awesome first step. Um, we'll go ahead out to the next slide. So the excitement of tonight. This is uh, the fun part and I get the fun part. So community campaign naming contest. You all recognize our uh, famous interactive water feature. Um, we all laugh. Um, those that, of us that have been on the project for a long time, um, you know, that's always been an internal name. It's, you know, one that we never intended to use it as a permanent name. It's, you know, kind of very stale and dry, but we needed something. But we knew we didn't want to... Um, put a name to it, come up with a name on it all. We wanted it to be a community project. This was a gift to the community by two um, families, Martin Kathy Bush and uh, Dave and Judy Baum. And although they actually have naming rights to this um, water feature, they chose not to put their name on it. They wanted it for the community and they wanted the community to pick that name. So knowing that we opened it last fall, um, this is actually the first season that we'll have a full season of it. We wanted to do the campaign when we're actually kicking it off this spring. So if we can go to the next slide. So what we did is in April, um, we received, opened it up to uh, receive uh, submissions um, through the entire month of April. And we kicked it off at the Forward Janesville Annual Dinner, you know, shared it through multiple um, newsletters, uh, social media sources, um, partners, newspaper, you name it. We received over 120 names. Um, it was really fun to get all the names, that's for sure. Um, I don't know if Jim Like's in the audience. I didn't see him come in. If many of you probably know Jim Like. He gets the award for most creative names <laughs> for the names that were sent in. I, he had some good ones, but... Um, anyway, early May, we took that, that group of names. We uh, sent it off to our uh, partnering organizations because we needed to start whittling it down, ask for their top 15 out of there. Um, and then from there, came up with our top five, which is what we put in front of our community, and we hosted a five-day um, uh, voting survey on that. Go to the next slide. So five names that were put in front of the community. We hope every single one of you guys out here voted was the Orb, the Bubbler, the Hub, the Spark, and the Link. All great names. I can see all of the names really work in there. Go ahead to the next slide. Um, before I get to the name, I want to remind everybody in, that the <laughs> interactive water feature to be named something else actually opened this week, beautiful weather, so it opened two days ago for the season, so make sure you're sharing that with your friends and family and kids and stop down and lights and music and, and water and all the fun. So we'll go to the next slide. One oh more thing before gosh. I tell you. <laughs> so I just wanted to let you know that this was a community vote. You all voted. We had over 700 votes come in. It's been approved by our donors. We actually had three individuals that submitted the same name. Of course, those three didn't know that each other submitted it. So we actually have three winners for this name. Next slide. And so if the following individuals, I don't know if they're right here, Britton Langfoss, are you in the house? Thought I heard me. Oh, come on up, Britton. Sandy Walton. Eric and Tringer. I don't know if either of those are here. Well, many of you know Britton. She submitted this name along with Sandy and Eric. I think you submitted a couple names, but you probably know now what one because you know which of yours was in the top five. But don't tell anybody because we're waiting until next session to give that away. No, just kidding. So anyway, here we go. Who's got a drum roll? 
Anybody out here? Okay. The new name of the interactive water feature is the bubbler. <laughs> Joan Lynn, I don't know if you should try out for the Academy Awards. That I was should, painful. Is that? <laughs> So I, I love it. I love it. I, you know, I've heard a lot of people that were really rooting for that name. So um, let's go to the next slide and I'll show you where the tabulations came in at. So I already told you it was a five-day voting, multimedia. We did have over 730 responses, but almost 40% voted for the bubbler, as you can see. I mean, the other ones got some votes, they got some legway in there, but the bubbler definitely came up uh, way on top. So we're excited. I mean, certainly, you know, this all just happened. We're gonna come up with a really fun um, marketing campaign destination. You know, it'll be meet you at the bubbler. Ultimately, that was our goal. We wanted something short and sweet, something easy to say, something that, you know, you can maybe visualize what it was. Maybe go to the next slide, I think what I, yep. So I've got the bubbler, in case you didn't know how to say it. <laughs> it's a place to refresh your mind through artistic programs of water, music, and light. Isn't that nice? Um, certainly the bubbler was first created in 1888 by a, a company you probably all know up in the Kohler, Wisconsin area, a small waterworks company that's well known for their water, uh, uh, faucet productions, but if you didn't know, the term bubbler is almost exclusive to a Midwestern term, and especially to Wisconsin. So that's why, you know, when you see it, we really liked it, because it talks, says Wisconsin, it's, you know, it's our hometown, so. Um, I think that's it I got for the bubbler. Next slide, yep, so that's it. So hopefully everybody enjoyed that and liked it. We're excited to find a way to use it and uh, to meet you all down at the bubbler. So I'm just gonna give just a really quick community campaign update. I will be at the informational table afterwards for more questions, um, but did just wanna let you know kind of where we're at on things. Um, we've talked a lot about it, pitched things um, at some of our fall events, um, but wanted to let you know where we're at. We can go to the next slide. So the image on the left will be one that you're gonna get on your way out. Um, it gives timelines, so you kinda get a feel for where we're at on some of our projects. Last October is where we launched our Light Up the Rock, our community campaign. It was a $1.5 million ask. That was our partnership with JPAC and then our Light Up the Rock. Um, currently, we're right around that 50% of our goal, which is a really good place to be at, but certainly we've got another 50% to goal. Um, and that's the 1.5 million of 50%. Our total rise, which is our $10 million goal, is at 5.37. So certainly, um, you know, look across the room. I know many of you are donors, um, investors in this project investors in the community, and certainly we ask that if you are, you share your vision, share why you've been involved, why you chose to you know, see and be a part of this um, long-term journey. And if, if, you're, if you haven't yet, you know, feel free to ask me um, more information, come up and learn a little bit more. We'd like everybody to find a way to get, get involved. Go ahead, next. Um, and of course, there's your pledge sheet, which is also on the back of that sheet. Jameswillrise.com is our website. And um, I thank you for coming tonight. I'm just gonna leave on one small little note. I'm gonna take my Arise Now hat off and put on my JoLynn hat that I'm a you know, Janesville community member and have lived here for about 18 years. I've grown up in Rock County. And you know, what I needed to do personally was to look at my home budget and see what I could do. And, and, and I made a contribution, so I am in. Certainly my contribution isn't going to change the world, but it was my way to say that I believe in what's happening. I believe in the community of Janesville. I believe in it because I have two teenagers that, you know, are someday going to leave, but I want them to come back. I want them to have, see, you know, things to do and engage, and certainly I want to stay here. So I, I just think it's, it's a real neat way to find your own way to be in at whatever level that may be. So thank you. All right, Jolynn. We kept her locked in a closet for three days so no one could get the bubbler information. That was a great program. You guys, the content of there was amazing. And again, it was a feast for the eyes. And um, I, I think the projects are going to just mushroom. 
Um, so it's exciting. What questions are there? We've got um, a couple minutes for questions. The way this program is designed is there's uh, going to be amazing food from Bodacious. The bar will be open. We've got community tables from uh, the Heart Walk, uh, from the, the, the Town Square Bike Race, from the Pie Ride. Uh, we've got RCHS there. We've got the library. Um, we've got um, a rise now. We've got DGI. We've got a lot of great tables down there. But any um, anyone open up with some questions for the panelists? This, I guess, would uh, tie in with something Christine Rebout said or, or showed in one of the slides. Um, we have an opportunity now. I know there's a lot of disappointment, but I, I think it's an opportunity to rethink what's going to happen with the stretch from Court Street to the library along the river. Uh, the plan years ago when Steve Schaefer was here was that was going to be green space. There's obviously a lot of economic incentive to have something built there. But it is going to be in a floodplain, and which was one of the reasons that uh, the credit union gave for backing out. Maybe a thought uh, that we should look into is to turning that not just into green space, but a playground area. Some of those slides that Christine showed, they had activities, places for children to go downtown, places for husbands to go. If, uh, if a dad is going to bring the kids over to our wonderful library, for example, while mom's shopping, wouldn't it be nice to have a playground in that area? Turn that into not just a, a park, but a, a park with a playground and have that left open along the river. I mean, just a, a thought, and you could build in art, you could do all of those things in that area. And, those, and Pat, that's a great comment too. We spent, our, our son Mac who's here tonight did a lot of hockey, and that's in winter months, and we were Wisconsin and we're winter, and so I've actually, in the many cities I've traveled through Wisconsin, uh, the towns I really appreciated that had duality spaces that could be used in the winter and in the summer, and multi-space, so a place for them to play, but a place for a parent to get something to eat too, or things like that. So those are the kind of ideas that we need to keep continuing with. Um, I will tell you, I was at the city council meeting uh, when they were talking about the Black Hawk Community Credit Union project, and one of the first speakers at the council meeting was a citizen who was speaking in public comment, and um, he actually said, well, you know, there's an old bank that could be renovated. You remember that, Sherry? <laughs> so you never know where ideas happen, so thank you for that. Other comments? Uh, is, the, is Brian from the library here? Oh, Brian, can you... Uh, you know, it's not a, a part of Arise now, but you get uh, almost how many visitors a year to the library? Uh, about 400, 400, right now. Do you hear that? 400,000 people come to our downtown library a year. That's amazing. We've got Rotary Gardens that, you know, 100,000, but I mean, the library sees, I was reading about it, almost 1,000 people a day. So that's an amazing, uh, the renovation, the gardens back there are beautiful. So can you just give us a quick update on what's happening with the transformation? Yeah, well, phase one just got finished, so we opened that up to the public so you can see the new carpeting, uh, the new lighting. Really looks nice, especially when you can, since we're doing phases, you can see the old part and you can see how much nicer it looks. So we're really excited, it looks really good. We got about 200,000 to go, so that's for our furniture. So a little bit more and then we'll have some nice uh, updates to the library. Great, so about 200,000 more to finish up? Yep. All right, and then when would the project be wrapping up, Brian? Mid-October. Mid-October, that's great, awesome. Um, and uh, Nate, you're here. You've got a microphone. Yeah. You've got a little construction going on. <laughs> we do. And you can, you can see we got a big hole in the back of our theater big behind hole. that curtain. That's why we pulled it. But <laughs> that's what you guys paid for for a rise now is a big hole in the back of our theater. No, it, it, it's a loading door that we're, it's gonna, gonna help us out immensely. And so we are under construction. We kind of feel like the LAX airport, if you've ever been there <laughs> for like the last 10 years. Uh, this is uh, kind of neat because when we started these talks back in December, you know, we were just announcing that we met our fundraising goal, and now you can kind of see the action taking place. You know, we've got a lot of new equipment that's come in in the last uh, few few months. Uh, these lights up here that are on right now, they actually move around, and you know, their LED lighting. Uh, the Education Outreach Center should be done by uh, July. 
uh, 4th of July is when uh, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that it'll be ready by. So it'll be just in time for our Alice in Wonderland camp that we're starting. So a lot of really awesome things happening here at JPAC. Um, you know, three years ago we were um, impacting about 16 to 17,000 people per year, up to uh, on pace for 28,000 uh, this year. So 10,000 uh, person increase over the last three years. I think that's pretty darn good. So, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for letting me put you on the spot. Any other? I, I see Jim back there. My comment is, do I encourage people to like in this city? I think we need to be more, uh, come out of the box or come up with more ideas for bike tracks and for people to, to have their bikes. Great idea. If I encourage that, that's good for our environment. Yeah. It's good for a lot of them. It's a great idea. So I would just suggest you consider having, if somebody said we only have evening performances, right. what about tonight? Right. I've gone to, no, I love that suggestion. That's maybe something I can talk with you, Val, on. I mean, you look at, um, you know, it's not just a bike rack. Maybe yeah. we can talk about it being some kind of community art project, yeah, too. Absolutely. And so, for the conversation. Yeah. I love it. All right. There are, anyway, we've got some good food in the lobby. We've got people who have conversations. I'm just going to go to the next slide. Um, there are a lot of places to stay connected. Um, I'm trying to be hip, so I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm not on Snapchat, so I can't follow my son, but, um, and Facebook. But um, I, if you're not on the city um, following, they've got someone witty, Hanley. I mean, they're clever. It's, it, it, you don't think of it as the municipality, social media. Um, and it's great. So we've got Facebook, we've got uh, a, a Convention and Visitor Bureau, great information, JPAC. Um, but I will tell you, if there's, I'm just going to say, if you just say, I just want to sign up for one thing. Um, I think DGI does a great job of just an all-encompassing calendar. They do a once-a-month email blast, and so if there's one thing you get, um, I'd recommend that, and it's easy to sign up for. Uh, there's also lots of local organizations that are embedded in downtown, and so if you want to really get, you know, your hands dirty, they're, they're here. Um, and then I can't say this enough. Um, what information you're given and how you act on it matters on the opinions you, you make and actions. And we are incredibly blessed that we have a locally owned paper. And I don't have to tell you that that's a dying breed, right? And so I can encourage, I think your, our civic duty is to subscribe to the Gazette. Because if we don't have the local writers like Neil Schneider and, and writing about these things, we're going to lose our local news. And it's so important. And so I literally go out in the morning and I get my national news and I'm more ticked if I don't have my gazette. Um, so just a plug for that, for staying connected. Um, so with that, that was not a paid advertisement, I promise. <laughs> On the next slide, um, go down, stay connected, um, and please fill out your um, survey. We really did pick the topics out of here um, from that, and so that will help us um, to, to do the next, we're hoping to do community talks about every six months, and we appreciate you being here, so thank you.